Hiberno-English from Latin Hibernia, Ireland, or Irish English is the set of English dialects natively written and spoken within the island of Ireland, including both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. English was brought to Ireland as a result of the Norman invasion of Ireland of the late 12th century. Initially, it was mainly spoken in an area known as the Pale around Dublin, with mostly Irish spoken throughout the rest of the country. By the Tudor period, Irish culture and language had regained most of the territory lost to the invaders, even in the Pale. All the common folk, for the most part are of Irish birth, Irish habit, and of Irish language." Some small pockets remained predominantly English-speaking, because of their sheer isolation their dialects developed into later now extinct dialects known as Yola in Wexford and Fingalian in Fingal, Dublin. These were no longer mutually intelligible with other English varieties. However, the Tudor conquest and colonisation of Ireland in the 16th century marked a revival in the use of English. By the mid-19th century, English was the majority language spoken in the country. It has retained this status to the present day, with even those whose first language is Irish being fluent in English as well. Today, there is only a little more than 1% of the population that speaks Irish natively. English is one of two official languages, along with Irish, of the Republic of Ireland, and is the country's de facto working language. Hiberno-English S spelling and pronunciation standards align with British rather than American English. However, Hiberno English's diverse accents and some of its grammatical structures are unique, with some influence by the Irish language and a tendency to be phonologically conservative, retaining older features no longer common in the accents of England or North America. Phonologists today often divide Hiberno English into four or five overarching classes of dialects or accents Ulster accents, West and Southwest region accents, including, for example, the Cork accent, various Dublin accents, and a superregional accent developing since only the last quarter of the 20th century. <laughs> Ulster English Ulster English or Northern Irish English here refers collectively to the varieties of the Ulster province, including Northern Ireland and neighbouring counties outside of Northern Ireland, which has been influenced by Ulster Irish as well as the Scots language, brought over by Scottish settlers during the plantation of Ulster. Its main subdivisions are Mid-Ulster English, South Ulster English and Ulster Scots English, the latter of which is more directly and strongly influenced by the Scots language. All Ulster English has more obvious pronunciation similarities with Scottish English than other Irish English dialects do. Ulster varieties distinctly pronounce an ordinarily grammatically structured i.e. non-topicalized declarative sentences, often, with a rising intonation at the end of the sentence the type of intonation pattern that other English speakers usually associate with questions as lowered, in the general vicinity of e diaresis tilde tilde as fronted and slightly rounded, more closely approaching and both in the general vicinity of with a backed on glide and fronted off glide, putting it in the vicinity of tilde as tilde, particularly before voiceless consonants as e, though nowadays commonly e or even when in a closed syllable. Almost always, as a slightly raised monophthong o, smiley face. A lack of happy tensing, with the final vowel of happy, holy, money, etc. as e. Syllable final occasionally as dark, though especially before a consonant. Topic. Notable lifelong native speakers Topic. Christine Bleakley, Jamie Dornan, Rory McElroy, Liam Neeson the Northern Irish accent is the sexiest in the UK, according to a new poll. The dulcet tones of Liam Neeson, Jamie Dornan, Christine Bleakley and Rory McElroy helped ensure the accent came top of the popularity charts. John Cole. His distinctive Ulster accent. Nadine Coyle. I was born and raised in Derry and I can't change the way I talk. Daniel O. Donnell, the languid Donegal accent made famous by Daniel O. Donnell. Colin Morgan. Colin Morgan has revealed that fans of the show are often confused by his accent. The 23-year-old is originally from Northern Ireland. Topic: 
West and Southwest Irish English Topic. West and Southwest Irish English here refers to broad varieties of Ireland's West and Southwest regions. Accents of both regions are known for the pin pen merger, the backing and slight lowering of towards tilde, the more open starting point for and of tilde a diaresis and tilde a diaresis, respectively, the preservation of as monophthongal o and, respectively, as t tilde t and d. In the West, and may respectively be pronounced as and before a consonant, sophist sounds like fished, castle like cashley, and arrest like arrest. Southwest Irish English, often known by specific county as Cork English, Kerry English, or Limerick English, also features two major defining characteristics of its own: the raising of two when before n or per meter, as in again or pen, and the noticeable intonation pattern of a slightly higher pitch followed by a significant drop in pitch on stressed long vowel syllables across multiple syllables or even within a single one, which is popularly heard, in rapid conversation, as a kind of undulating sing-song pattern. <laughs> Notable lifelong native speakers Roy Keane, Cork accent. Daithi O say, his Kerry dialect. The Rubber Bandits, Rubber Bandits strong Limerick accent. Sits on a frequency like a tambourine which can cut through any noise. Topic: <laughs> Dublin English. Topic. Dublin English is highly internally diverse and refers collectively to the Irish English varieties immediately surrounding and within the metropolitan area of Dublin. Modern day Dublin English largely lies on a phonological continuum, ranging from a more traditional, lower prestige, local urban accent on the one end to a more recently developing, higher prestige, non local regional and even super -regional accent on the other end, whose most advanced characteristics only first emerged in the late 1980s and 1990s. The accent that most strongly uses the traditional working class features has been labelled by linguistics as local Dublin English. Most speakers from Dublin and its suburbs, however, have accent features falling variously along the entire middle as well as newer end of the spectrum, which together form what is called non-local Dublin English, spoken by middle and upper class natives of Dublin and the greater eastern Irish region surrounding the city. A subset of this variety, whose middle-class speakers mostly range in the middle section of the continuum, is called Mainstream Dublin English. Mainstream Dublin English has become the basis of an accent that has otherwise become superregional see more below everywhere except in the north of the country. The majority of Dubliners born since the 1980s led particularly by females has shifted towards the most innovative non-local accent, here called New Dublin English, which has gained ground over mainstream Dublin English and which is the most extreme variety in rejecting the local accent's traditional features. The varieties at either extreme of the spectrum, local and New Dublin English, are both discussed in further detail below. In the most general terms, all varieties of Dublin English have the following identifying sounds that are often distinct from the rest of Ireland, pronouncing as fronted and or raised ash tilde tilde e, as retracted and or centralised tilde, as a diphthong in the range local to non -local of tilde o tilde. Topic. Local Dublin English Topic. Local Dublin English or popular Dublin English here refers to a traditional, broad, working-class variety spoken in the Republic of Ireland's capital city of Dublin. It is the only Irish English variety that in earlier history was non-rhotic, however, it is today weakly rhotic, and it uniquely pronounces as as tilde e as a tilde a diaresis as tilde o and, respectively, as t and d, the local Dublin accent is also known for a phenomenon called vowel breaking, in which the vowel sounds, and enclosed syllables are broken into two syllables, approximating j, u, and i, respectively. Topic. Notable lifelong native speakers Topic. Damien Dempsey. His distinctly Dublin sounds and a working-class Dublin accent. 
Amelda May, Irish celebrities who have distinctive accents such as Amelda May, Conor McGregor. Topic: New Dublin English. Topic: Evolving as a fashionable outgrowth of the mainstream non-local Dublin English, New Dublin English, also Advanced Dublin English, and formerly Fashionable Dublin English, is a youthful variety that originally began in the early 1990s among the avant-garde and now those aspiring to a non-local urban sophistication. New Dublin English itself, first associated with affluent and middle-class inhabitants of Southside Dublin, is probably now spoken by a majority of Dubliners born since the 1980s. It has replaced yet was largely influenced by moribund D4 English, often known as Dublin 4, or Dart Speak, or, mockingly, Dort Speak, which originated around the 1970s from Dubliners who rejected traditional notions of Irishness, regarding themselves as more trendy and sophisticated. However, particular aspects of the D4 accent became quickly noticed and ridiculed as sounding affected, causing these features to fall out of fashion by the 1990s. This new mainstream accent of Dublin's youth, rejecting traditional working class Dublin, pronounces as open as a Maybe a diaresis listen, with a backer vowel than in other Irish accents, though still relatively fronted. As high as or even o, causing a re-split in the cot-cot merger that traditionally characterized Dublin speech. As high as or even o. As the Londonian diphthong, listen. And as both possibly rounded o stroke, perhaps causing a fur fair merger. And as possibly merged, as well as and as possibly merged, leading to potential horse horse and which which mergers. Topic: Notable lifelong native speakers. Topic: Sersha Ronan, the dub accent in which she speaks. Andrew Scott, his soft as rain Dublin accent. Topic. Superregional Southern Irish English Topic. Superregional Southern Irish English sometimes, simply, Superregional Irish English or Superregional Hiberno English here refers to a variety crossing regional boundaries throughout all of the Republic of Ireland, except the North. As mentioned earlier, mainstream Dublin English of the early to mid-1900s is the direct influence and catalyst for this variety. Most speakers born in the 1980s or later are showing fewer features of the 20th century mainstream superregional form and more characteristics of an advanced superregional variety that aligns clearly with the rapidly spreading New Dublin accent. See more above under non-local Dublin English. Ireland's superregional dialect pronounces as quite open a along a possible spectrum a tilde a diaresis tilde with innovative particularly more common before voiced consonants, notably including r. As starting fronter and often more raised than other dialects, a tilde ash tilde may be a diaresis listen, with a backer vowel than in other Irish accents, though still relatively fronted. As as almost always separate from o, keeping words like war and war, or horse and horse, pronounced distinctly. As a diphthong, approaching o listen, as in the mainstream United States, or listen, as in mainstream England. As higher, fronter, and often rounder, tilde. Topic overview of pronunciation and phonology topic The following charts list the vowels typical of each Irish English dialect as well as the several distinctive consonants of Irish English. Phonological characteristics of overall Irish English are given as well as categorizations into five major divisions of Hiberno English, Northern Ireland or Ulster, West and Southwest Ireland, Local Dublin, New Dublin, and Superregional Southern Ireland. Features of mainstream non-local Dublin English fall on a range between Local Dublin and New Dublin. Topic pure vowels monophthongs topic The defining monophthongs of Irish English, the following pure vowel sounds are defining characteristics of Irish English. The vowel, as in cut or run, is typically centralized in the mouth and often somewhat more rounded than other standard English varieties, such as received pronunciation in England or general American in the United States. Most Irish English varieties make some distinction between the broad a and flat a of received pronunciation, whereas general American, for example, makes no distinction. 
There is inconsistency regarding the lot cloth split and the cot cot merger. Certain Irish English dialects have these phenomena while others do not. Any and many are pronounced to rhyme with nanny, danny, etc. by very many speakers, i.e., with each of these words pronounced with a. All pure vowels of various Hiberno English dialects. Footnotes. Carrot 1 in Southside Dublin's once briefly fashionable Dublin 4 or Dort speak accent, the, and broad, a. Set becomes rounded as, squared in southwest Ireland, before, n, or per metre, is raised to cubed due to the local Dublin accent's phenomenon of vowel breaking, I, may be realized in this accent as I in a closed syllable, and, in the same environment, U, may be realized as U. Carat 4 unstressed syllable final, I, or is realized in Ulster accents uniquely as e tilde. Other notes, in some highly conservative Irish English varieties, words spelled with a and pronounced with I in RP are pronounced with E, for example meat, beat, and leaf. In words like took where the spelling oo usually represents, conservative speakers may use u. This is most common in local Dublin and the speech of northeast Leinster. Topic gliding vowels diphthongs topic The defining diphthongs of Hiberno-English, the following gliding vowel diphthong sounds are defining characteristics of Irish English. The first element of the diphthong, as in ow or doubt, may move forward in the mouth in the east namely, Dublin and superregionally, however, it may actually move backward throughout the entire rest of the country. In the north alone, the second element is particularly moved forward, as in Scotland. The first element of the diphthong, as in boy or choice, is slightly or significantly lowered in all geographic regions except the north. The diphthong, as in rain or bay, is most commonly monophthongized to e. Furthermore, this often lowers to in words such as gave and came sounding like gev and chem. All diphthongs of various Hiberno English dialects. Footnotes 1 Due to the local Dublin accent's phenomenon of vowel breaking, ah may be realized in that accent as j in a closed syllable, and in the same environment, ah may be realized as topic r colored vowels. Topic the defining r colored vowels of Hiberno English. The following r colored vowel features are defining characteristics of Hiberno English. Roticity, every major accent of Hiberno-English pronounces the letter R whenever it follows a vowel sound, though this is weaker in the local Dublin accent due to its earlier history of non-roticity. Roticity is a feature that Hiberno-English shares with Canadian English and General American but not with received pronunciation. The distinction between R and OR is almost always preserved, so that, for example, horse and horse are not merged in most Irish accents. All R colored vowels of various Hiberno English dialects. Footnotes 1 In older varieties of the conservative accents, like local Dublin, the R sound before a vowel may be pronounced as a tapped rather than as the typical approximate. Squared Every major accent of Irish English is rhotic, pronounces R. After a vowel sound, the local Dublin accent is the only one that during an earlier time was non-rhotic, though it usually very lightly rhotic today, with a few minor exceptions. The rhotic consonant in this and most other Irish accents is an approximant. Cubed the R sound of the mainstream non-local Dublin accent is more precisely a velarized approximant, while the R sound of the more recently emerging non-local Dublin or New Dublin Accent is more precisely a retroflex approximant. Carat 4 in Southside Dublin's once briefly fashionable Dublin 4 or Dort speak accent R is realized as Carat 5 in non-local Dublin's more recently emerging or New Dublin accent R and R may both be realized more rounded as O stroke. Carat 6 in local Dublin, West, Southwest, and other very conservative and traditional Irish English varieties ranging from the south to the north, the phoneme R is split into two distinct phonemes depending on spelling and preceding consonants, which have sometimes been represented as R, versus R, and often more precisely pronounced as versus. As an example, the words urn and urn are not pronounced the same, as they are in most dialects of English around the world. In the local Dublin and West, Southwest accents, R, when after a labial consonant e.g. fern, when spelled as er, or or, e.g. word, or when spelled as ir, 
After an alveolar stop e dirt are pronounced as, in all other situations, r is pronounced as. Example words include In non-local Dublin, younger, and superregional Irish accents, this split is seldom preserved, with both of the r phonemes typically merged as. Carat 7 in rare few local Dublin varieties that are non-rhotic, r is either lowered to or backed and raised to. Carat 8 The distinction between r and or is widely preserved in Ireland, so that, for example, horse and horse are not merged in most Irish English dialects, however, they are usually merged in Belfast and New Dublin. Carat 9 in local Dublin, due to the phenomenon of vowel breaking, j u may in fact be realized as j u. Topic. Consonants Topic. The defining consonants of Hiberno-English The consonants of Hiberno-English mostly align to the typical English consonant sounds. However, a few Irish English consonants have distinctive, varying qualities. The following consonant features are defining characteristics of Hiberno-English H fullness, unlike most English varieties of England and Wales, which drop the word initial, H sound in words like house or happy, Hiberno English always retains word initial. The phonemes as in the and as in thin are pronounced uniquely in most Hiberno English. Is pronounced as d or d, depending on specific dialect, and theta is pronounced as t or t. The phoneme, when appearing at the end of word or between vowel sounds, is pronounced uniquely in most Hiberno English. The most common pronunciation is as a slit fricative. The phoneme is almost always of a light or clear quality, i.e., not velarized, unlike received pronunciation, which uses both a clear and a dark L sound, or general American, which pronounces all L sounds as dark. Roticity, the pronunciation of historical r, is nearly universal in Irish accents of English. Like with general American but not received pronunciation, this means that the letter r, if appearing after a vowel sound, is always pronounced in words such as here, cart, or surf, unique consonants in various Hiberno-English dialects. Footnotes Carat 1 in traditional, conservative Ulster English, K, and per gram, are palatalized before a low front vowel. Squared local Dublin also undergoes cluster simplification, so that stop consonant sounds occurring after fricatives or sonorants may be left unpronounced, resulting, for example, in pound d and loss t. Cubed roticity, every major accent of Irish English is strongly rhotic, pronounces r. After a vowel sound, though to a weaker degree with the local Dublin accent. The accents of local Dublin and some smaller eastern towns like Drogheda were historically non rhotic and now only very lightly rhotic or variably rhotic, with the rhotic consonant being an alveolar approximant. In extremely traditional and conservative accents, exemplified, for instance, in the speech of older speakers throughout the country, even in southwest Ireland, such as Michael O'Muir Harte and Jackie Healy Ray, the rhotic consonant, before a vowel sound, can also be an alveolar tap. The rhotic consonant for the Northern Ireland and New Dublin accents is a retroflex approximant. Dublin's retroflex approximant has no precedent outside of Northern Ireland and is a genuine innovation of the past two decades. A guttural, uvular, is found in northeast Leinster. Otherwise, the rhotic consonant of virtually all other Irish accents is the postalveolar approximant. Carat 4 The symbol is used here to represent the voiceless alveolar non sibilant fricative, sometimes known as a slit fricative, whose articulation is described as being apicoalveolar. Carat 5 Overall, HW, and, with are being increasingly merged in superregional Irish English, for example, making wine and wine homophones, as in most varieties of English around the world. Other phonological characteristics of Irish English include that consonant clusters ending in J, before U, are distinctive. J, is dropped after sonorants and fricatives, e.g. new sounds like no, and su like su. DJ, becomes, D, e.g. do, do, duke and duty sound like, ju, juke, and, juti. TJ, becomes, e.g. tubas, tube, tunas, tune. The following show neither dropping nor coalescence, kj, as in cute, mj, as in mute, and hj, as in huge, though the h can be dropped in the southwest of Ireland, the naming of the letter h as h is standard. 
Due to Gaelic influence, an epithetic schwa is sometimes inserted, perhaps as a feature of older and less careful speakers, e.g. film Fulham and form FM. Vocabulary Loan words from Irish a number of Irish language loan words are used in Hiberno English, particularly in an official state capacity. For example, the head of government is the Taisha, the deputy head is the Tanaist, the parliament is the Eructas, and its lower house is Dale Aran. Less formally, people also use loan words in day to day speech, although this has been on the wane in recent decades and among the young. <laughs> Derived words from Irish Another group of Hiberno-English words are those derived from the Irish language. Some are words in English that have entered into general use, while others are unique to Ireland. These words and phrases are often anglicised versions of words in Irish or direct translations into English. In the latter case, they often give a meaning to a word or phrase that is generally not found in wider English use. Derived words from Old and Middle English Another class of vocabulary found in Hiberno-English are words and phrases common in Old and Middle English, but which have since become obscure or obsolete in the modern English language generally. Hiberno-English has also developed particular meanings for words that are still in common use in English generally. Other words. In addition to the three groups above, there are also additional words and phrases whose origin is disputed or unknown. While this group may not be unique to Ireland, their usage is not widespread, and could be seen as characteristic of the language in Ireland. <laughs> Grammar and syntax The syntax of the Irish language is quite different from that of English. Various aspects of Irish syntax have influenced Hiberno-English, though many of these idiosyncrasies are disappearing in suburban areas and among the younger population. The other major influence on Hiberno-English that sets it apart from modern English in general is the retention of words and phrases from Old and Middle English. From Irish Topic. Reduplication Topic. Reduplication is an alleged trait of Hiberno-English strongly associated with stage Irish and Hollywood films. The Irish R bith corresponds to English at all, so the stronger R chore R bith gives rise to the form at all at all. I've no time at all at all. R eagle go, lit. On fear that means in case. The variant R igla na higla, lit. On fear of fear, implies the circumstances are more unlikely. The corresponding Hiberno English phrases are, to be sure, and to be sure to be sure. In this context, these are not, as might be thought, disjuncts meaning, certainly. They could better be translated, in case, and just in case. Nowadays, normally spoken with conscious levity. I brought some cash in case I saw a bargain, and my credit card to be sure to be sure. Topic yes and no topic Irish lacks words that directly translate as yes or no, and instead repeats the verb used in the question, negated if necessary, to answer. Hiberno English uses yes and no less frequently than other English dialects as speakers can repeat the verb, positively or negatively, instead of or in redundant addition to using yes or no. Are you coming home soon? I am. Is your mobile charged? It isn't. This is not limited only to the verb to be. It is also used with to have when used as an auxiliary, and, with other verbs, the verb to do is used. This is most commonly used for intensification, especially in Ulster English. This is strong stuff, so it is, we won the game, so we did. Topic recent past construction Topic Irish indicates recency of an action by adding after to the present continuous a verb ending in ing, a construction known as the hot news perfect or after perfect. 
The idiom for I had done X when I did Y is I was after doing X when I did Y, modeled on the Irish usage of the compound prepositions indiaidh, tar aeus, and in aeus, be me tar aeus, indiaidh, in aeus ex a dayanum, nuera rine me y. Why did you hit him? He was after giving me cheek, he had been cheeky to me. A similar construction is seen where exclamation is used in describing a recent event, I'm after hitting him with the car, tame tar aeus a abualid lays in g car. She's after losing five stone in five weeks. When describing less astonishing or significant events, a structure resembling the German perfect can be seen. I have the car fixed. Ta and car dice i the gam. I have my breakfast eaten. Ta mo brickfista i the gam. This correlates with an analysis of H1 Irish proposed by Adger and Mitrovich, in a deliberate parallel to the status of German as a V2 language. Topic reflection for emphasis topic The reflexive version of pronouns is often used for emphasis or to refer indirectly to a particular person, etc., according to context. Herself, for example, might refer to the speaker's boss or to the woman of the house. Use of herself or himself in this way often indicates that the speaker attributes some degree of arrogance or selfishness to the person in question. Note also the indirectness of this construction relative to, for example, she's coming now. Tis herself that's coming now. Is I fine ought to ag teach to noise. Was it all of ye or just yourself? And sibs are fad no tusa fine a bigceist? Topic. Prepositional pronouns Topic. There are some language forms that stem from the fact that there is no verb to have in Irish. Instead, possession is indicated in Irish by using the preposition at, in Irish, ag. To be more precise, Irish uses a prepositional pronoun that combines ag, at, and may, me, to create a gam. In English, the verb, to have, is used, along with a, with me, or, on me, that derives from ta, a gam. This gives rise to the frequent, do you have the book? I have it with me. Have you changed for the bus on you? He will not shut up if he has drink taken. Somebody who can speak a language. Has. A language, in which Hiberno-English has borrowed the grammatical form used in Irish. She does not have Irish. Nil Gwailga Aici, literally. There is no Irish at her. When describing something, many Hiberno-English speakers use the term. In it. Where. There. Would usually be used. This is due to the Irish word and pronounced O-U-N or on fulfilling both meanings. Is it yourself that is in it? And too fine ada an? Is there any milk in it? And bh fool bane an? Another idiom is this thing or that thing described as this man here or that man there which also features in Newfoundland English in Canada. This man here and fear co, cf, the related ancio equals here. That man there. And fear sin, cf, the related ansin equals there. Conditionals have a greater presence in Hiberno-English due to the tendency to replace the simple present tense with the conditional would and the simple past tense with the conditional perfect would have. John asked me would I buy a loaf of bread. John asked me to buy a loaf of bread. How do you know him? We would have been in school together. We went to school together, bring and take. Irish use of these words differs from that of British English because it follows the Irish grammar for beer and tog. English usage is determined by direction, person determines Irish usage. So, in English, one takes from here to there and brings it to here from there. In Irish, a person takes only when accepting a transfer of possession of the object from someone else, and a person brings at all other times, irrespective of direction to or from. Don't forget to bring your umbrella with you when you leave. To a child, hold my hand, I don't want someone to take you. Topic. To be. Topic. The Irish equivalent of the verb, to be, has two present tenses, one, the present tense proper or, aim sir lathreach. For cases which are generally true or are true at the time of speaking and the other, the habitual present or, Aim sir nathlathreach for repeated actions. Thus, you are now, or generally, is ta tu, but you are repeatedly is bayan tu. 
Both forms are used with the verbal noun equivalent to the English present participle to create compound tenses. This is similar to the distinction between esser and estar in Spanish. The corresponding usage in English is frequently found in rural areas, especially Mayo, Sligo in the west of Ireland and Wexford in the southeast, inner city Dublin along with border areas of the North and Republic. In this form, the verb, to be, in English is similar to its use in Irish, with a, does be, do be, or, bees, although less frequently construction to indicate the continuous, or habitual, present. He does be working every day. Bayan say ag ober gachla. They do be talking on their mobiles a lot. Bayan siad ag kaint go minich ara buon poka. He does be doing a lot of work at school. Bayan say ag dayanam go lior oiber ar skoil. It's him I do be thinking of. Is er a bian may ag smeoniv. This construction also surfaces in African American vernacular English, as the famous habitual be. Topic. From Old and Middle English Topic. In old-fashioned usage, it is, can be freely abbreviated tis, even as a standalone sentence. This also allows the double contraction tisn't, for, it is not. Irish has separate forms for the second person singular to and the second person plural sibh. Mirroring Irish, and almost every other Indo-European language, the plural U is also distinguished from the singular in Hiberno-English, normally by use of the otherwise archaic English word ye G. The word use sometimes written as yaus also occurs, but primarily only in Dublin and across Ulster. In addition, in some areas in Leinster, North Connacht and parts of Ulster, the hybrid word yes, pronounced yes, may be used. The pronunciation differs with that of the Northwestern being GZ and the Leinster pronunciation being Jace. Did ye all go to see it? Are I my SIBH go lur chun a thakent? None of yaus have a clue. Nil seal, laid r bitha gabe. Are ye not finished yet? Natch bh fool SIBH kriaknath foss? Why eyes are after destroying it? Ta sibh tar as a scryasad, the word ye, yis or use, otherwise archaic, is still used in place of you for the second person plural. Year, yisser or user are the possessive forms, e.g., where are yous going? The verb mitch is very common in Ireland, indicating being truant from school. This word appears in Shakespeare, though he wrote in early modern English rather than Middle English, but is seldom heard these days in British English, although pockets of usage persist in some areas, notably South Wales, Devon, and Cornwall. In parts of Connacht and Ulster, the mitch is often replaced by the verb scheme, while in Dublin it is often replaced by on the hop, bounce. Another usage familiar from Shakespeare is the inclusion of the second person pronoun after the imperative form of a verb, as in Wife, go you to her ere you go to bed. Romeo and Juliet, Act 3, Scene IV. This is still common in Ulster. Get yous your homework done or you're no going out. In Munster, you will still hear children being told. Up to bed, let ye. Lt. For influence from Scotland, see Ulster Scots and Ulster English. Topic. Other grammatical influences. Topic. Now is often used at the end of sentences or phrases as a semantically empty word, completing an utterance without contributing any apparent meaning. Examples include, by now, equals, goodbye, there you go now, when giving someone something, ah now, expressing dismay, hold on now, equals, wait a minute, now then, as a mild attention getter, etc. This usage is universal among English dialects, but occurs more frequently in Hiberno English. It is also used in the manner of the Italian, prego, or German, bit. For example, a barman might say, now, sir, when delivering drinks. So is often used for emphasis, I can speak Irish, so I can. Or it may be tacked onto the end of a sentence to indicate agreement, where, then, would often be used in standard English, by so. Let's go so. That's fine so. We'll do that so. The word is also used to contradict a negative statement. You're not pushing hard enough. I am so. 
This contradiction of a negative is also seen in American English, though not as often as, I am too, or, yes, I am. The practice of indicating emphasis with so and including reduplicating the sentence's subject pronoun and auxiliary verb is, are, have, has, can, etc. such as in the initial example, is particularly prevalent in more northern dialects such as those of Sligo, Mayo and the counties of Ulster. Sure is often used as a tag word, emphasizing the obviousness of the statement, roughly translating as but, and, well. Can be used as, to be sure. The famous Irish stereotype phrase, but note that the other stereotype of Shurin is not actually used in Ireland, or Sure, I can just go on Wednesday. I will not, to be sure. The word is also used at the end of sentences, primarily in Munster, for instance, I was only here five minutes ago, sure, and can express emphasis or indignation. Two is often omitted from sentences where it would exist in British English. For example, I'm not let go out tonight. Instead of, I'm not allowed to go out tonight. Will is often used where British English would use, shall, or American English, should, as in, will I make us a cup of tea? The distinction between, shall, for first person simple future, and second and third person emphatic future, and, will. Second and third person simple future, first person emphatic future, maintained by many in England, does not exist in Hiberno English, with will generally used in all cases. Once is sometimes used in a different way from how it is used in other dialects, in this usage, it indicates a combination of logical and causal conditionality. I have no problem laughing at myself once the joke is funny. Other dialects of English would probably use if in this situation. See also Topic Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Bibliography Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. Irish English and Ulster English. PDF. Archived from the original PDF on the 21st of April 2014. Topic. External links. Topic. Everyday English and slang in Ireland